Hello everyone. Welcome back to the platformer lessons. In lesson two, we'll be looking at adding more classes and objects and getting them moving. So as you can see, I've placed my player just over on the left side and a little bit up from the center. Next, we're going to be adding three more classes. One is going to be for the background. So go ahead and click the plus sign beside classes. And rather than typing out the whole word background, I'm going to just type B, G in capital letters. Next, we're going to add the floor class. So floor with a capital F, okay. And finally, we're going to be adding one called fly enemy. I'm going to capitalize the first letter of both words, fly and then enemy, just to make it easier to read. And not only do we need a class, but we need a sprite for each one. So click the plus sign beside sprites. For the background, I'm going to use the background forest. So click select asset. And I'm also going to just name this one BG. OK. As you can see, it's entered into the sprites section as BG.jpg. Open up the asset store again, and we're going to look for the floor tile. This one is called grass tile. So you might have to go a few pages to the right. There it is. select asset. I'm going to name it grass tile, just like how it is in the asset store there. And next we're going to get a sprite for the fly enemy. This one is called fly man. It's in the previous slide here. This guy right here. Now you can call this one fly enemy and hit OK. And now we've got three more sprites to use in our game. The next objective is to put them actually in their game. Right now we've only got Astro, our player object. We're going to add a few more lines to add each other object with its own sprite. So at the end of line four here, we're going to press enter a couple times. Now the reason I'm leaving line 5 blank is just to make it easier for us to read. The computer ignores blank lines, so using tricks like this to make it easier for us is a good practice. So let's go ahead and put in our background. For the background object, I'm going to name it Forest. And it's going to be a BG class. Remember, whenever we're adding a new object, it has to be one of the classes that we have over here. In this case, it's the BG. I'm also going to put a sprite on my forest. So I say forest.sprite equals sprite, curvy brackets, apostrophe, bg.jpg. Remember, you want to use the exact spelling as you have in your sprites section over here. If I hit stop and play, you'll notice I've got a very nice background all of a sudden. However, the player has disappeared. Our poor Astro has disappeared behind the background. Now the reason for that is because when Pixelpad adds more objects to your game, it adds them on top of the previous objects. Now the easiest way to fix this is to change the order of the code. If we want the forest to be appear behind Astro, all we need to do is put this code first. Now you might not want to type it all out, so I'll show you a shortcut. If you highlight the code by clicking and dragging the mouse, you can cut it by pressing Control X together. If you go to the beginning of line one, you can press enter a couple times, and that gives us space to paste that code that we cut. 
with Control V. And just like that, we'll have our background and then Astro on top. Look at that, he's back. So let's go ahead and add some floors in. I'm going to call the first floor, Floor 1. And it's going to be a floor class. So remember, floor with capital F, and then our curvy brackets. I'm going to give the floor a sprite. So floor1.sprite equals sprite grass tile dot png. And it should show up right in the middle. There it is. Now I don't want it in the middle. I want it to be below the player. So I'm going to move its x and y, just like we did for Astro. If I say floor1.x equals negative 200, and floor1.y equals, let's say, negative 100, to place it below the middle. That works for me. You can adjust the numbers for this floor's x and y if you like. But for now, I'm going to move on to making a second floor. Since one tile isn't very large, I'm going to extend it by placing another floor. I'm going to name this one Floor 2. And it also equals a floor class. That's right, you can use the same class as many times as you want. Since a class is more of a blueprint for how things will work, you can reuse the blueprint as many times as you need to and they'll all act the same way. In the case of our floor, they're not going to act very much at all. They're just going to sit there. But this will be very useful later when we want to have multiple things like enemies. So I'm also going to give floor two the grass tile sprite. So we need sprite grass tile dot png. And just like floor one, I'm going to position it over near the player, and below him, oops, floor 2 dot y equals negative 100. I'm giving both floors the same y values, so they'll be at the same height, but I'm moving floor 2 over to the right a little bit. It's an addition of 90 units, just so it ends up to the right of the first floor. Next, let's add the fly enemy. Now the fly enemy, I'm going to name Buzz. So Buzz equals fly enemy with those same round brackets. This is a, our third class that we added up here. And Buzz is going to have the fly man sprite. So buzz.sprite equals sprite fly enemy dot png. So right now Buzz is in the middle of the screen. I'm going to move him to the left of the player and a little bit up so he's almost level with the player. So on the next line I'm going to have to scroll down a little bit. I'm going to say buzz dot x equals negative 400 and buzz dot y equals 50. That puts him right where I wanted him. Last time in lesson one I promised that we'd get things moving, so let's get to it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make the fly enemy move to the right. Now I'm going to do the code with you first and something is going to go wrong which I'll explain in just a second. Let's actually go over to the loop code. You'll see that it's completely empty right now. There's nothing actually happening during our game. All this is happening in the start, right at the beginning of the game. 
If we want something to happen during the game, that's when we look at the loop. So I want the fly enemy, Buzz, to move to the right. So I need to be increasing his X value. The easiest way to do that is to just add 1. Now you notice that I use plus equals here. What this is saying is buzz.x is now equal to one more. And remember, the loop runs about 60 times per second. So after one second, we'll have increased buzz's x value by 60. Now again, this isn't going to work. Unfortunately, we're going to get an error, and I'll explain why. In the console down here, we're seeing name buzz is not defined in game loop on line one. Remember how I said how the start code and the loop code are separate from each other? Well, there's a certain way we need to write things in order to link them and have them work together. And that special way is by writing the word self in front of things we want to be shared. So in front of buzz, I'm going to say self dot. And you notice how it turns purple. That's because self is a very important word in Python. It's recognized as a keyword. Every time we want to say buzz now, we have to say self dot buzz. So every line here, we're going to say self.buzz, self.buzz.x, self.buzz.y. And now the game is going to be keeping track of buzz no matter where we write it in the start or the loop. Of course, that means in the loop, we also have to write self.buzz. Now let's see what happens. Look at it go. Our loop code is making Buzz's X increase by one every frame. And every frame is just one cycle of our loop code. And once again, that's running 60 times per second. So Buzz is moving 60 units per second. There he goes off the screen. Now, say you want to make him move to the left. Well, there are two ways of doing that. The first one is saying minus equals one. Now we're decreasing the x value by one every frame. The other way is to keep your plus equals one, but add a negative number. If we add a negative number, it's as if we're subtracting one and he moves to the left regardless. You can do the same thing for Buzz's Y value, although I won't be doing that for this enemy. Let's remove the negative and have him continue moving to the right. How do I make him move faster? Well, that part's easy too. If I want to increase the value faster, all I need to do is use a bigger number. Let's try using the number five instead. It's much faster. How about 50? Wow, he's right off the screen. Feel free to adjust this number as much as you need to. I'm gonna set him back to one to make him nice and slow and easy to dodge. That's it for lesson two. We've looked at how to add more classes, we found some more sprites for our game, and we added them to our game. We made sure that the background shows up before the player, so the player appears in front. We learned that we can reuse the same class as many times as we like, and we learned the keyword self. You'll be using this word a lot in Python. Finally, we learned how to move objects by increasing their value in the loop. Well, we've got a great movie going on now, but what makes it a game? Well, it's all about player input. We need to be able to interact with the game. 
That's what we'll be looking at in lesson three. See you there.